Hey guys, back with uh, another video. This time we're leaving the world of Marxism and we're kind of entering the world, at least for the first time uh, in our class, we're entering the world of the importance of social networks. Uh, at the end of the, of the lecture, I'll make the argument that there is a lot of research to be done here for any of you who are thinking about becoming uh, professors of sociology because we're in a completely new phase of networking, as you guys obviously know, because of, um, because of the digital world. But Norbert Elias is going to be our first person who's talking about the importance of networks in this course. Uh, he's, like I said, he's not interested in how the capitalist system screwing people over and messing up their lives, but he is interested in how societal level developments are affecting the way we live in everyday circumstances. So what he's interested in, what he's studying is books on manners. Books on manners are telling you how you should conduct yourself in just normal situations. And what he has found is that there's stuff that was, that was uh, included in these books in like the 15, 1600s that is not included in the books now. And it's not because it's become socially acceptable to do these things now. It's because you'd never have to tell somebody that it's not socially acceptable. Uh, things like, so in the first books he's looking at, he said, you know, you would have, you would have things like when you're at a dinner party, don't pick up a bone from the table, gnaw on it for a little while, and then put it back. That's considered something you shouldn't do. If you have to pick your nose at the table, uh, try to not do it, or at least then not stir the sauce with your fingers. I apologize if you're eating while you're watching this. But this is the type of stuff people had to be told. In When I was in graduate school, one of my professors said one of the things that he found was that if you have to uh, if you have to pee during dinner, don't like just get up, go open up a curtain and just pee there. Find a different place to do it. So things that you and I would say, well, like you, I mean, you barely even have to teach a kid that. Although you, you do, like you have to teach kids these things. They don't appear in manners books for adults, and so he's interested in the fact that he's got this huge body of data these manners books that go back five, six, seven hundred years. And he's looking at them and they change. What is considered important to tell somebody not to do changes over time. And he makes the argument that it's because over the course of time, we become more civilized. Now, civilized, uh, I mean, based on the examples I've just given you, we can see there's an advantage to this. Um, but I think the better way of thinking about it, not that we've become better people, but that we have more and more things that are considered off limits for us. His central argument is this, the longer the dependency chains, the more stuff you can't do. So what are dependency chains? Uh, dependency chains are just the number of people that you depend on for getting by in life and the number of people who depend on you also. So I'm at the center of a particular dependency chain where off in terms of the people that I depend on, you guys or your parents who are paying my salary, uh, my department head who hired me. Um, on the other side of it are my kids who depend on me to be able to put food on their table. Um, my parents who depend on me to, you know, help them negotiate different, uh, different situations now that they're older. I'm part of this huge long chain and, and obviously I've just given a couple of examples, but you can see there are basically everybody on up at, at the university I'm dependent on. So his argument is this back when we were agrarian we didn't depend on very many people. You may have depended on a landlord um, and then you, otherwise you farmed. And then, uh, and then you had your kids who depended on you, but not a whole lot of people. It's a relatively short dependency chain. And in that case, it kind of doesn't matter as much how you conduct yourself. I mean, you don't want to get like kicked out of the community but you're not gonna lose your job. 
You're not going to lose your social reputation, or at least in a way that's going to affect your ability to stay alive because you're a subsistence level farmer. With the Industrial Revolution in particular, and the market economy, and our old friend, the division of labor, all of a sudden, I, who used to be a, an independent subsistence level farmer, all of a sudden, my reputation matters. Um, I can get fired from my job. If people see me picking my nose and putting my fingers in the... I'm sorry, I'm not going to use that. The horrible example. If I'm doing these disgusting things, uh, it could be that I lose my job or that people are disgusted by me and that that has an impact on the way my life works and the people who are dependent on me. Um, that's, his, that's basically his argument. Um, and that because of that... There are more and more things that are off limits to us. I have to pay more and more attention to how my behavior affects my reputation, and that's going to affect my ability to keep my job, my ability to put food on the table for my kids, all of that stuff. Period. That's the argument. That's the argument. Um, and, you know, there's an advantage to this, right? Like, those disgusting things that had people had to learn not to do, those things are, you know, those things are now not done. So the world has become not just more civilized, but more hygienic. But Norbert Elias says, but it's also become less varied, less interesting. Um, yeah, there are a whole bunch of things that you can't do. And I'm not saying that like, oh, it's super interesting if people do disgusting things. But there's also stupid stuff that's in Manners books. Like, you can't wear this color with that color. Well, not like that's a huge deal or anything, but it's limiting freedom, right? Like there's all kinds of stuff that we have to be worried about because of our reputation. And what Elias says is, so we gain things, we gain hygiene, we gain uh, a common set of, of um, norms that govern our behavior, and those things are good, but there's a spontaneity that's lost in this. Remember, um, Georg Zimmel talked about uh, about us being creative people, not just in terms of the Marxist terms of making things, but in terms of making jokes, in terms of doing spontaneous things. Those are creative. And Elias would say, as the number of things that fall into this category increase, that means the less and less that you are able to create. Again, there are wins here. We're a more hygienic people. But, as, uh, as George Herbert Mead would say, there's a lot more me, a lot more thinking about how society would think of me than I, that spontaneous creative part of me. Um, so, from a personal standpoint, I'm limited. My freedom is limited by this. From a societal standpoint, we also start um, taking away people's ability to create. And in doing that, we we limit our ability to change society as well. Okay, um, I think that's it. Uh, to conclude, the ways people are connected to each other hasn't been a prominent issue. Norbert Elias is bringing that up with this idea of dependency change, and we can think of those as social uh, dependency chains, and we can think of those as social networks. Um, and... Oh, and then the last thing I wanted to say is if you are looking for a research area as you go off to be a professional sociologist and I incorporate your name into this class in a few years, um, thinking about how, so this was his idea, but chains are different, there's different ways of networks existing. Dependency chains is one of them, but the world of social networking that exists in, uh, on the internet changes things in really important ways that people are only just now beginning to study. So, if you're looking for a doctoral dissertation idea, maybe in this direction. All right, that's it for Norbert Elias. I'll see you in the next video where we talk about Jürgen Habermas, his idea about how macro-level society affects our ability to communicate with each other effectively. So, I'll talk to you about that in the next video.